my background maybe like some people know me but like not all of you know me um, I'm Isa I'm originally from Austria I'm born in Vienna I'm a social worker and um, I went to live in Argentina some years ago where I did um, work with Alta Mundi a little bit like I got um, my experience about mesh networks working with Alta Mundi and I was like not so interested in the whole freaky stuff of it, the, the programming stuff, but I was really interested how you organize communities and um, how the whole social aspects um, are like, yeah, how, how to build up communities and like um, a, a, how you, yeah, how you do the, the networking and the whole, um, I'm like more coming from the um, food serenity movement like to take care of your own food take care of your own so you can be um sufficient uh, autosufficient yeah my english is really rusty like <laughs> but um so i also was really interested in technology um like how to be um self-sufficient in technology and stuff like that so that was my personal interest and um in Latin America, the situation is really different from, from here. Maybe some years ago, like in Catalonia, like Ifinet was started. It was similar because there was no internet in the, in the rural area. And that's why people got engaged. But nowadays, I have the feeling that, um, that the, the situation is really different in Europe from what I've seen. I don't know much about um, France, but like I, I got some insights of like Freifunk and Funkfeuer in Austria which is a really like specific group of people that are actually engaged in, in the networks. And I was wondering, um, yeah, how it would be like, and I sent some mails to women that are in involved now. Um, I'm currently living in Brazil and I was also um, involved in a, in a, in a, in a deployment of a, of a network with Fisher women. Like it, like we all, like the whole technical team was women going to a <coughs> women community and we deployed a, um, a mesh network there which is um, not necessarily like the people that i did this with is not necessarily connected to the internet like to the worldwide internet they they take a server with them and they deploy um, like this dollar server with the people and then it's up to them if they're gonna contract internet like the connection if they're gonna um yeah connect their um mesh to the to the to the rest of the of the internet but that's something like we we went there just like it's really like we just went there for a few days and it would take much longer discussions in do we want to connect it to the internet who will pay for it and stuff like that so it's interesting as well um how it's organized so yeah, that's a little bit now about um, my background. And I was wondering, yeah, like in Argentina, I know there is a lot of movement, hap uh, like a lot of change happening in Alta Mundi, which is like a shift from like, um, it used to be many men and now it's like they try to like, um, maybe Sun, but Sun just went with my baby. So <laughs> wants to tell a little bit, it would be nice maybe to ask him also about his op opinion. But I, I also wanted to see who is in the room and if you have any opinion, yeah, like if you think about, um, if you think about your community, like is it really diverse? Is it really, um, yeah, so I wanted to like, I want to invite you to do some discussion about it and maybe think about how to open it or what would be ideas to, change it if it's needed or not and um, I wrote a mail and asking some women for some opinion and um, Deborah and Eleni wrote me back so maybe also you want to share but you're gonna be sharing in the afternoon as well Eleni was mm -hmm. yeah você vai compartilhar sua experiência na tarde no então but um, well there's a woman in the room who is actually in a role of a technic technician in in a, in a network in a rural area which i think i don't know if it's really com commune in in other areas so yeah i was wondering do you have any opinions i want to like yeah i want so to invite we yeah we use this mic so you, we don't need to pass the mic around but whatever you say will be streamed and maybe like some some other motivation is because like in Latin America it's really different. It depends where, but like you have communities that have no other way to connect to the internet. So like the community really has to like um, um, get involved, and this normally means that it's not just the men being involved. You know, like you have to organize a workshop, you have to 
buy the equipment, you have to do tech hands-on workshop, you have to build up the antenna. So normally all people get together and there are many like different things that are involved cooking and maybe taking care of the kids and like I, I was really like I was really, um, um, how do you say, like I was really motivated. Or I, I felt it's really like powerful when I was like working on antennas with women that were w meanwhile breastfeeding the babies and taking the screwdrivers and opening the routers and stuff like that because it's needed. Like it's not like, I don't know, like if you would tell me in Vienna, do you want to open a router and do stuff like that? I'm like, why? No, like you don't have to to get internet. So I guess this is a big difference, but that's like um, something to, yeah. So anyone wants to um, share some experiences? I just like about Freifunk, I've heard that that many people or like some other people might might have been involved in the in the refugee crisis, like uh, because like it depends really about like what's what's the motivation to to get involved. So I wanna like open the discussion and open the room to to talk about and also like I'm hearing, I wanna hear some experience. I I also brought um, two mails that I was sending to two lists. I was asking for uh, about women participation and I used women with the with the star, and I sent it to the to the to a hacker space in Vienna. And I got 25 replies, but no one replied to my email. They were just discussing why I put the star next to the women <laughs> thing. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> like, <laughs> and then also on a, on a, on a Freifunk uh, list as well. And I, 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 I got like really few replies that were really like helping and all the rest was just, yeah, leaving some. So, yeah. I want to invite you, like, do you have some opinions or like some something to share with me that would be really nice as well, maybe also from other parts of the world and yeah. Yeah? A very quick question. Thanks. How far away is the nearest Radio Shack? Radio Shack? <laughs> this door. You're in the middle, yes, you're in the middle of the jungle. Yeah. You've got some cabling, you've got some power, you've got this and that, but if you've made a mistake, something's broken how do you how are they how are you maintaining things it's normally it's really difficult you mean um like when we go somewhere and we would deploy stuff or you can ask elaine elaine how one far one long thing una 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 un como es store no sé, una loja para comprar cosas electrónicas, como si você mora, como si cualquier cosa está rompiendo, você tiene que comprar una cosa nueva. ¿Cuánto tiempo normalmente precisa o como como es el transporte a la ciudad más próximo? Ajá. Uh -huh. 20 20 Mas normalmente tem na cidade mais próxima? Não, Sim, em Belém tem. Porque onde a gente mora não fica tão longe uh -huh. da cidade, que é Belém. So she lives 20 minutes by boat from, from a really big city, Belém, in, 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 in Brazil. And so they can get stuff. But there are different communities we know, which you have to take, like you go there three days, you have to take various boats, you have to like, and, and also like it, it depends really like brazil is a continent and you have like many many different um um realities but yeah it might be really different yeah and with violation we also in the community they have like we we make like a storage of cables and equipment sure. that she can just get and make her own uh, the cable that she needs so you have some stock normally. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. so there's something of the context of the question that you have a group of people who come in and set up, and somehow you need to maintain this stuff. Yeah. And somehow, I just sort of imagine that your group is wandering from city to city on a monthly basis, um, fixing things that are broken. And if the internet goes down, it just stays down. Well, there is a, there is like in in Latin America, I think it's a discussion, an ongoing discussion about different colle co um, collectives that are doing this kind of deployment and helping with deployment. In Argentina, they kind of went. It's really a shame. Like, can someone get sun? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> um, because like I'm I'm not so involved in Alta Mundi today, so I guess he could like share. 
Yeah, but like anyway, like I know like yeah, the the Brazilian collectives I know, the women collectives that I was like participating as well. Um they try to transmit all the knowledge they can, but it's uh, it's not possible normally because like you either it's not financed or the people that are doing these workshops cannot stay longer like if you go one week and then you are off again that's not that's not possible to transmit this knowledge anyway so it's like a, it's like a, yeah it's something really yeah uh, do they use system to store the knowledge locally like two weeks or things like that or yeah, so the, the, the women collectives <laughs> um I was I was involved if you I was involved they 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 leave a they leave a server there but they don't necessarily like I they don't have like a document documentation like a complete documentation of the networks and stuff. It's missing. Like this is I think it's a it's an issue we were talking about um the deployment of networks like in Latin America, which is really different from here. But like um I was like I'm all like I really I like I like to push like some um discussion also about involving some other peoples than only men in, in the in the installation. I was telling about an installation in Brazil that I was participating with some um women's collective but um, we are wondering like how this knowledge is transmitted and if there is any documentation yeah. normally like normally the local communities in Alta Mundi I have a little bit more like insights but from years ago so San is here to like do the actual um, but like um, normally the local leaders or the local people involved in the networks they are starting their own documentation as well because like if something breaks also with experience it kind of um, it builds up but I don't know um, but you're also working on better documentation about networks right now and stuff like that. Yes, no? we have <laughs> been written, writing some manuals yeah. that are for the people and the community, not for technical persons. But they can, as a starting point, for them to learn and to dig into the technical details. And uh, starting from, I don't know, what a, how to do a. a a mesh and, and a community around them, uh, and why it makes sense, uh, and the installation manual. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. And I, I, I was just telling a little bit that I feel like in Alta Mundi you're trying to make a little change to get more women involved or like in, in other positions. Mm -hmm. But I cannot talk for you, so I wanted like maybe to invite okay. you to share some experience if you want to. What what is the like the, the motivation or like something? Yeah. Yeah, yes. do you think need? Yeah. No. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay with the yeah. Um yes, the idea is that uh, we the men uh, in this uh, project uh, that we are almost uh, always working in the technical part of the community and then developing the, the tools and that we s support the women in our, in our projects <coughs> and let them be the, the face working with the community because they, they also know how to do that. But if we are at, at, the, at the same level with them, uh, it's like they are always looking to the men, talking. So we try very hard to, to not be in part of the, to be not only supportive and maybe, I don't know, work with the kids or <coughs> uh, do stuff like that. So. We try to to go to the uh, to events like this uh, and support the, the women going to these events, uh, but it's kind of difficult maybe for the for the language because not all women talk English in, in our project. Uh, so we want them to I don't know to start learning English or, or to, to be part of the translation uh, in this process. Uh, it's, it's very hard uh, because we want to do things but if we do the things it's like we don't leave space uh, for, for women in our projects but we are a uh, very few person so uh, that's like if we don't work 
the projects don't move like uh, in a piece, so I don't know, <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's contradictory, uh, and we fight with ourselves on how to do that. Mm -hmm. We really don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, we are figuring it out. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's like, um, yeah. So, ping and trace route are two of the fundamental core tools that I have not been able to explain to my parents in English, Spanish, picket, or whatever. And the question was, he was trying to bridge the communication draft in Spanish to the local populace, male or female. How do you do? How well do these ideas come, come together? Or is it just, you click on this, and wow, you're dancing cats. <laughs> I don't know if I understood right, but like I think the most important thing is really leave the space, like really let the women like explore their own way to to, to participate and then r really listen. Like like if sa if I say please, I need help to take care of the kid, and then just do it and not like discuss about it and stuff. That's a real need I have at that moment, and I think that's the most important thing. And sometimes maybe it doesn't like really like you say like sometimes the project might not go directly where you see it might have to go now but maybe it's more important to to to, to take care of the baby and the, the whole social thing that is happening i was talking to javi 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 don't see javi why ah javi hola <laughs> yesterday i was talking uh, with you as well about the participation of women in mexico and you said like some leaders didn't let the women participate and you have like an issue hola they didn't let them um, participate in an event or it was an issue if they can go with the kids or or the husband or the husband I think Deborah also told me a, 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 an example no, of a woman that really wanted to participate in an event but then the husband didn't let her go no wasn't it you maybe it was Bruna <laughs> yeah it was yeah so yeah. I want to add also that these tools that we're talking are uh, taught by, by men like us. So uh, when women are working these mm -hmm. things out in, in, in new ways, um, what we do is just listen more to them. Not just this is the tool that we, we use, so you have to learn fresh root or whatever. Because things can be thought in many ways, mm. um, so we we try to be as open as, as we can. Uh, uh, to be uh, I don't know maybe in, in more creative ways. Uh -huh. So we we try to develop these tools uh, that are not like what we are used to to work, but uh, they work better for the community mm. because I know it's a graph like maybe it's more understandable yeah. mm. do you have any examples positive examples or any like anything you want to share about your com like communities like I don't know where all of you are coming from but like there are really different communities here I don't know how it's in France for example if how is the how is the how is the the participation of women in France, I would be happy to like get some 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 ideas or like not only France but also the other communi communities that are here. Yesterday I talked a little bit about South Africa with you know, like maybe you wanna like share as well. Like yeah, I just invite you to collect it and like put it in the room. Yeah. Um, uh, I try uh, uh, so, so we in Barcelona have uh, weekly meetings. The Gifila, yeah. the place where the community meets. Uh -huh. And we are having troubles uh, trying to have in the same room the technicians and the social actors. The so the community itself, no? Mm -hmm. And it's also because uh, we, we have some of the technicians that, that they are probably more professional or more straightforward in a solution. Uh, so they don't incentivize volunteers or users, or so if it's not attractive for other men to join the project, it's worse attractive for women because uh, they are the, the per, probably the first or the second woman in the room, full of men that are very competitive. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's very difficult to handle this kind of things. I suspect that it can help uh, group dy dynamics, but well, th that's that's something I need. We need to research on uh, group dynamics that help to um, to avoid this kind of uh, invisible meritocracy of yes, in the room is this guy that he knows everything, and when he talks, everyone is that. Stop talking. Uh, so probably that kind of I don't know theater games or things that help people to be in the same level and from there uh, do things. But then we have a problem, no? Because we are here to to help to the network because the users are complaining. So the users take the role of I want to be a user. I want the things uh, to be fixed. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of <laughs> pressure in one room with very few people. Uh -huh. And that pressure, I think, it's very important for someone that is newcomer and only comes to one give up and says, OK. <laughs> Never come back Bye. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK. Sorry. Yeah. So, so Yeah. Um, it's a, and it's a smaller project. Uh, I would say the of positive examples are the places where more women join has been events, uh -huh. and especially when we've gone to other events. So we went annually to the Maker Festival that happened, so connecting to that community, which is big in Toronto, and hosted a bunch of workshops, and we did some with the local library. Um, so I think some of it was going into spaces that were not like hacker spaces or like mm -hmm. technical spaces. Um, but I think not that many women have stayed involved. Uh, and like mm -hmm. even myself included, it's been harder to stay involved in some ways. Um, yeah, but I think um, I think the learning part <coughs> is like where we've had the most people really want to learn. And it has been something where, I mean, I think we've intended to make it so it's more accessible to people who don't have a technical background. That, that has largely also meant like not people who are overrepresented in that space, which in Toronto can be like uh, white men. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> uh, I also know from uh, some events in Ireland, uh, for example, where I was kind of a little bit out of the scene, on the scene, but also not so much uh, positive uh, experience. Experiences, I suppose, would be. I know they're trying to uh, rally more women in the technology departments mm -hmm. um, over the last few years. And um, for example, I was at one talk where uh, maybe about 300 people in the room, um, uh, different uh, gender, sexualities, uh, all kinds of people, and uh, a question was proposed uh, um, of this sort. Uh, who here knows about uh, software, technology, something of this sort. And uh, um, I think the question was uh, uh, proposed for the women in the room, and maybe about five women put their hand up. Um, this was actually uh, quite an eye-opener for me. I didn't expect, expect to see so few women um, that were actually interested uh, in these areas and actually doing something. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's good that um, they are trying to get more women in the field, and I hope that there will be a difference soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, is there any relationship between the community size, the room size, and the uh, involvement of women? No. It's a question. Yes. <laughs> The, the, the size of the community, if it makes an effect, uh, how many women are participating? Yes, like if the small, big, uh, huge. I think it really depends, like also where you start from. Like uh, what I what I've seen in Brazil is like if you go with women in a community, you normally start with the women. So like if you go as a white man and you talk to the men in the community, you address 
these kind of people. So I think we also have to think about the approach and like how to and where to start from, you know, like, and um, like it's, I, I think it's important that also men see that they have like, I don't feel like only women can change this, but in Brazil, the, the situation is really, really, really violent. And like the, the, the women that I, I met, they don't want to work with men anymore. Like they do their own organizations and they really don't want to mix up again. And I understand it now. Like I went with this European approach. No, this must be possible, but no. Like <laughs> there are really few men really listening or like really open to like to like in in the in in the moment of the deployment or like in the planning and stuff. Really able to step back and say, okay, no, maybe we do it completely different or we do it like, you know, like. So yeah, it's really. Um, I don't I think this is like something to take in mind and not now like all these financial the funds they they are saying you have to have a woman which kind of helps sometimes some organization but sometimes it's just yeah we put a woman to sign but we don't give her like real power to do the project that she wants to do like we just apply with an like this is an approach which is not like in my point of view, yeah but if I don't know if that was the question, because it really depends the community. There are so many different communities, and I don't know like um, how it is in Holland, like if there is a f community. But like in 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 Vienna, I know that there are not not many women participating. Paul knows as well. We had some. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm French, so, uh, and I have some views on the stuff I'm planning how, how it happens in the uh, French non-profit ISPs. And um, I don't know, I noticed a few things. And, like, for instance, it's sometimes annoying when, when, when you talk with someone and, and, and a man, and he will, uh, I mean, the, the, the idea is that you received probably orders from other men, and that you are like, the person who obeys more than the person that decides. And, um, and sometimes I had weird conversations when some, some guys would tell me, oh, they told you to do that, or you, um, oh, th th those guys with whom you, you, you work, basically, um, oh, you, you are, like, you listen to them when they told you to do this or that. And, and it's annoying because also you don't want to, you don't want the subject of the, of the conversation to be, no, I'm actually, I mean, I decided as well, and I am able to decide, and so this is, uh -huh. this, was a, this was a bit annoying in, like, during the process of uh, the organization, and it was not, uh, like, the Batonish community at all, it was more French people in, in a, a non-profit ISP. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, and also, as a, because I'm, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm doing a PhD actually on uh, non-profit ISPs, and what I noticed also is um, how uh, the motivations on women in these communities are analyzed by other people, and sometimes I hear, I mean, I, I heard so many times something like, oh, the motivation is not so clear, because she's probably here because of her boyfriend, for instance, or uh, because she's, I mean, for every other kind of reasons, but activism or just po a political stand and, and, and the, the possibility for you to decide also ideas and have convictions and, uh, and, and also try to collaborate and, uh, and to work together. And, and I guess, I mean, what matters to me now is that is also to be recognized more uh, as a worker than a woman, and mm -hmm. as someone who uh, like invest a lot of energy in doing things, mm -hmm. and uh, and not def I, it, it, I don't feel like I defend any rights, but um, but if there is a right to defend, mm -hmm. I guess it's more the right of uh, yeah being recognized as someone valuable with skills. And, um, and yeah, and, and I guess that's it. Thank you. Merci. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. Thanks so much for this uh, amazing opening. But uh, this, I totally agree that, uh, I mean, it is 
is something that we should be discussing a lot. I would like to add a little bit about I'm Brazilian. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, Brazil has 200 million people. Yeah. And uh, there are many different initiatives around the continent. And uh, I think the gender issue is something that we should pay attention that if we understand that uh, technology is a male, white, male-driven technology development, so so increase the understanding of different uh, difference between not only women but uh, gay people. Maybe we should include race. I mean, yeah. black people developing, and uh, I would you know in, include much more people. And there are many many groups trying to work on this. Yeah. And uh, if we mix. I think this understanding. So I think we have all to gain. I, 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 I didn't understand, you know, I understand the women that don't want to work with men anymore. It's a kind of uh, a statement that I don't see this as a very, you know, collaborative process of trying to understand the, the, the issue, you see. Mm -hmm. So as a Brazilian, as someone that is facing this, uh, this difficulty in Brazil and abroad, Mm -hmm. I mean, we should encourage mixing. <laughs> yes. We should encourage you know, people to be together and tolerate and understand the difference instead of essentialize in some way. Oh, in but Brazil, the situation is. No, no, but it's a two gone. way. It's a two way thing. Like, both sides have to uh, have this understanding. And I understood if there is no understanding from the other side, then sometimes the reaction is to do something separately. This is not what like I asked them if they would like to do it different, but like is their experience and I also understood it. I'm not saying that it's for all the people. I also have some positive examples and there are some technical um, men in Brazil that are really co-working with women. Also Deborah knows some, um, especially Trojan, who is also part of Colabi, is really like working also with Bruna. Bruna that officially doesn't work with men anymore, like she said herself, you know, like, so it's interesting. Um, but, but you have to have like a real, like a different approach in order to work like on the same level and really, yeah. So, yeah, but it's, it's, yeah, thank you for sharing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to speak in French and someone then uh, uh, does that? Yes. I work with community networks and we often meet the problem of integrating women in community networks. It's very hard. And I work at, uh, especially with women. I'm happy because the image that they show is one of the friends of us, a contract of us. It is unimaginable to have a child and to come with him in a congress I'm very happy because in this image is what, what is really uh, inimaginable uh, in our community to uh, go to a conference and uh, breastfeed uh, in a conference with a child. You get happy. So, because uh, this is really what hinders uh, uh, women participation, that you go, uh, when you are acquiring tools to, to create community mm -hmm. networks, to operate it, uh, people uh, reply you, kind of tell you, you have to get a husband and have a, uh, a stay at home and take care of it with the husband. Sinon, en travaillant avec les femmes, on se rend compte que certains niveaux de technicité manquent, un niveau technique qui manque. Et souvent, lorsque nous commençons à travailler en communauté, 
parler. La femme te dit non, je dois aller cuisiner, je dois prendre soin de mes enfants, je dois. Donc là, il est très très difficile de les rassembler. Merci. Merci beaucoup. I was I was I wanted to say that like um, I did also propose to have like a smaller um, environment to do a workshop so if someone really would be interested to go deeper into the topic and like maybe share some like practical or like an analyze your situation maybe in more detail um, that we can meet um, when is it the slot two thirty. from 2.30 to yes. like uh, uh, two yeah okay. four or something so like we we can meet up in a in a smaller group and like do some um some yeah some l some um some more practical talking as well and yeah I think yeah. yeah so basically at two there will be Elaine presenting for half an hour and then uh, there will be your, your workshop uh, yeah probably in the uh, close space with um, cushions and so on uh -huh. that's fine for you yeah it's fine so like um yeah Javi. <laughs> It's okay. Uh, in Mexico, we are working, we try to work to with the health, uh, health popular education, with, uh, starting with the experience of the 
people. And now we the experience we have to start the and with 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 women it's very difficult to go to Oaxaca or the capital of the state uh, because you know they have uh, her husbands uh, don't don't let to go uh, mm -hmm. all of the communities, the fathers uh, or the or the communities with with this job, their job, sorry. And with the uh, popular education we has we have tried to to teach or to learn with them uh, with the all the experience of the people. And that's a, a, a bit difficult, but we, we use uh, the, the context of the, of the community, of each community, to, to start to, to, to learn with them. Mm -hmm. That's right. You, you come from a very special community, maybe also like, I don't know, like the context, if you know, like Javi's from Oaxaca. Yeah. And they have a really different understanding of community in like in uh, like in Europe. There's nothing similar to this. Like they have, they also have like community working hours. So like if you're missing, you have to pay if you're not there. No, like there is a system. Like if you don't, if you go outside of the community and you're not doing your community work hours, you have to pay. So they have to like they're always discussing in a community what is. That's what you told me yesterday, but like you can. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's really interesting, I think, also like these um, examples, or like I'm like also, I think like it's one part of that, like the women are there working now with the feminist collective, no? Like, so I think like we should like open this community and maybe try to like to make um, connections with organization that already are working with women like we don't have to like start from zero like there is a lot of experience in the world and we could just like say hey we have something to offer you and not like we have to teach you like we have something to offer you that's like a really different approach even like and and like if you want to use it for your you like it i think the most important thing is to explain also what what it brings to someone and then if they really voluntarily want to use it and and implement it then starting from there, the motivation is really different as well. So that's something I like would put here in the room. Yeah. <laughs> what What's the time actually? I have no idea. Uh, we have like uh, five or ten, ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Yes. Yeah? Also, like uh, for you to to tell me which which part you think it's more important. The thing is the lack of interest in technology. Uh, if it's a lack of knowledge, so if you don't know how it works, we will be not so much interested in, in joining. Or if the lack of opportunity is the most relevant. I cannot say what's the biggest in my point of view because, like, I like mesh network is really like if you ask anyone outside of this bubble i don't know that many like how many people would know what it is like i like i'm asking you like as well i don't know how much um yeah <laughs> so um <laughs> But like, um, so that's also really different, I think. Like if I tell something like this in, in a community where there's no other possibility to connect, it's really different from like here, I guess. But um, so like I cannot talk like universal, what I think is like the most. Um, but I don't think that like the saying that women have a lack of, of like motivation in participating in technology, it's not, in my point of view, it's not, true like it's just maybe the way of like using technology or how to participate and like stuff like that we just have a really like I, I, and I'm not talking for all the women because like every woman is also working really differently but like um, yeah we do use stuff and if we really feel it's it's useful then we also get involved and we get like really 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 caught up and like and we can also like I will never learn how to program program because I, I can spend I have way more skills in other fields and I think other people can do it better and I think like the most important thing that we find a good community commun communication in between all these different 
yesterday we were talking about Deborah said also that she got the feeling that some people tell her all the time she has to learn it all and she has to stand and understand everything. Then I'm asking back, do you know to produce your own food? Do you know how to take care of the land and like grow your own food? Do you know how to do your own clothes? Like we're not doing everything ourselves, you know? So like, um, there <laughs> so yeah, the, yeah. Okay. But yeah, I cannot give you a universal answer. I think it depends on the community you are, that you have to ask this question to yourself and maybe to some people around to analyze it and then from there um, start to change something if it's, if it's I, <laughs> if it's needed or wanted. <laughs> yeah? Maybe, so I work in an office where um, it's like 50 men and two women in a technical role. The only other women are in customer facing roles and a bit of a role. And the men in the office have very specific markers of what they consider as competence and intelligence. Like they look for very specific things uh -huh. as soon as someone comes in. So, for example, the other woman in the office has a PhD in astrophysics, and she's now in an environment where she has had to teach herself how to code, teach herself networking, teach herself everything. And I still hear men saying things about her because she doesn't have all this knowledge they expect her to have. Meanwhile, she's coming from a background you know, where obviously she wouldn't have that knowledge, and they have none of that. And I feel, having come in, like quite recently, they also with a different set of skills. I also feel I'm being judged on the set of markers that they use. And I, I mean, I don't know how to change that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's kind of there's an assumption that you need to know all these things before, and you're not given the, the time and space to learn those. Uh -huh. um, and yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to do. I feel quite uncomfortable. I'm quite new at the company. I've been there like two, three months now. Two months. And it's like, I, yeah. I, and that's like quite common. Maybe um, community networks and maybe this kind of community is different in terms of the pace and in terms of sort of inclusiveness. I, I guess because that's a, it's a company for profit. So, you know, speed and getting things done is, is the most important thing. But, I mean, if that's the kind of environment yeah, that women are always going to go into, I mean, this, then obviously they're going to, you know, as soon, maybe, maybe as soon as you start a family, you're going to take space, and then you're going to fall out of the world. And I think that's what that Okay. And it's always like we having to, like, because there's, we're the minority, like, the two women, it's like we have to catch up to their way of thinking. Uh -huh. We have to adapt to their way of doing business. You feel that way. Working. Um, so Thank you for sharing. That's interesting. Uh -huh. yeah. Or maybe we want to get deeper into it later, some of you. So. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, Paul. Paul? Maybe, maybe one story from the community in Vienna that I can share. Yeah. So like in Vienna we have a mesh network and it's totally male dominated. Um, <laughs> yes. We, there's, there's a large part of the, of the community that wants to change that, but there's another part of the community who really is opposing that. Uh, that manifests in like a request to remove gender neutral language from our website. I mean, we, we voted that down, but th these are the kind of things that happen in Vienna. And of course, it's frustrating, and I'm coming now slowly to terms with it. And my main, my main learning now is that it's basically about how, how to make these, how to make privileged people, in this case, the men that master the technology, be aware of their privilege. 
the, mm -hmm. the effective way to make them aware of the privilege. That's, mm -hmm. that's the method I'm, that, yeah, for me matters now. Because they don't feel the privilege, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. And effective means that they're not rejecting that, that they're really internalizing it. There are so many that are totally new to this and want to get into this. And from time to time, uh, women shows up at the community meetup and first everyone is totally mesmerized and like, what's what happened? <laughs> Alien being in the room. <laughs> and I've done that. I'm really interested in methods how to effectively communicate the privilege. So if there's anybody who's an idea on that. Uh, yeah. I know that Guy is really focusing on that. He's not here this year. He's staying in Brazil, but he really is focusing on that and he really wants to like um, also open, like I'm talking for him now, which is weird, which is weird but um, he's not here to share. Um, he really wants to like um, start groups of men or like really get involved in, in technology focusing on that, like on, on your own. What can you do as a man in order to, to encourage women, but also what can you do about your own behavior, what is actually happening and, and stuff like that. So I think, and also I heard also um, Pablo, no? Pa Pe sorry, <laughs> Pedro, uh, who also said that he is interested and like maybe there are some, yeah. Uh, no? Is it only the social structure and technology that needs to change or also technology itself? I think if like more women or like more diverse people would get involved, also the technology automatically would will change as well. But I don't know. Like I have no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. But that's my opinion. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. what? <laughs> In the end, I didn't write. I'm sorry. I'm sorry.